Moving Iron Podcast is proud to be part of the Global Ag Network. The network is going live soon, so check out globalagnetwork.com for more details and updates. Now on to the show. Moving Iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving Iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Moving Iron. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast Market Rundown with Angie Setzer. How you doing, Angie? Good. How are you? Oh, good. Uh, you guys supposed to get any snow this weekend? Any that big storm coming through your way? No, I think we're split. So I think it's supposed to snow north of us and then south. So I'll take it. Right on. I'm, as long as it doesn't. What, that wind last weekend was too much for me. So yep. Carl's from Iowa. He didn't understand why I was so worried. And then about halfway through the night, he's like, you think these trees can handle it? I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been worried about. So but we <laughs> yeah. survived. They survived. We're, you know, I'm ready for spring now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. We're supposed to get about seven or eight inches of snow here this week. And so really? Ew. good times. I'm excited. Yeah. Good times. It's only March 1st. That's like, I'm like, it's March 1st now. We can. Any day, we're on our way. Any day, <laughs> so. any day now. All right, so China talks uh, got extended out here past uh, today, which would have been the final day had they not got something kind of in the works. So it makes you think that there's something out there that they're pretty close to saying yes to. Um, but like anything else with this deal, it's kind of been back and forth a million times with, yes, we did say that, but no, we didn't say that talk. So who knows what that means. This yeah. week, the uh, market has... Didn't have a big sell-off by any means, but just didn't perform well. And you figured yeah. that the information that came out about this would have had some support, not a bunch, but just some support in in what you saw in the market. So what's your opinion yeah. about this week's trade, and where do you see it headed for the rest of the day? Well, I'm watching it you know, really close right now because it's, it's Friday afternoon. You and I are talking. It's recorded. So yeah. obviously, we'll be seeing this probably after the close. But today's close is, is going to be... I think pretty big for both corn and wheat. So yeah, we haven't had this tremendous sell off, but we lost 62 cents um, in the month of, of February on wheat, most of it coming over the last couple, three weeks. So, um, you know, there's been a conversation that we've been having this morning. I have a few friends that have been trading it, trying to uh, catch the knife and are really trying to figure out what the heck they're going to do, um, you know, in the meantime. So we made it to first notice day. We made it into the, the delivery period. Um, and the weirdest thing with the wheat markets you always have to keep in mind is that there are three very specific um, groups. So you have Kansas City, you have Minneapolis, and you have Chicago. And so when I talk about wheat, I'm talking Chicago specifically. But you have these big entities that can kind of control the delivery process. And so there's been a lot of conversations about whether or not that's what's taking place here. So if you're long, if you come in as a spec and you buy the, the March board or something of that nature, when you're long at first notice day, you can then take delivery or you have to take delivery. You don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the one thing that a lot of folks have been saying right now is that we've had a lot of these longs in place. We've been punishing the hell out of them, pardon my, my language, but I mean, it's it's hurt to, to own wheat. And so we've been beating them up over and over again. You never even get, you know, kind of this step off the mat sort of deal. Um, and so we they either had to, to puke the position or get ready to take delivery. Um, so we saw the Andersons come out and deliver about 600 contracts here over the last two days, the first two days of delivery. People have been stopping them and trying to re-deliver. Um, hopefully what that means or what that's getting us, you know, short, short story long, basically, is as we work into the delivery process and start to actually see the wheat move into the hands of the people that physically, you know, can handle it, either take delivery or, or ship it out. I think we could see a correction. So that's what we're watching right now. We're 11 cents off the, the low on the March. Uh, corn is also off the low trading a little bit higher here. Um, by a quarter cent, so don't spend it all in one place. But we're about five cents off the low, so these are all good signs of uh, you know hopefully being done with this death march that we've been on for what feels like forever. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about <clears throat> the weather. I mean, we're we're heading into March first now. The next two weeks of the of March look like it's supposed to be pretty uh, pretty brutally cold through much of the Corn Belt in the in the plains. Um, 
when is the market going to start looking at that being like, we might get behind on some planning here and, and this might be a bigger issue than we thought just because of the amount of field work that still needs to be done. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. Um, you know, and, and so that's a struggle. I mean, we knew the amount of field work that's needed to be done for quite some time, obviously, because it didn't get done by the end of November. Um, but it really wasn't a conversation that a lot of people had. I had a bunch of people still saying, oh, no, 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 no. We just need some warm, dry weather in February and we'll be OK. All right. Well, cool. It's March 1st. Right. We saw <laughs> record high snowfall. Right. I think Des Moines was uh, fifth snowiest, like Mason City was in the top 10. Um, you know, you look into to places like the Dakotas, Minnesota, you know, those places. OK, it's March 1st. It's not a big deal. Look at the Delta. Look at the plains. Yeah. You guys are going to have seven inches of snow this weekend. You know, yep. so the places that should be doing this fall prep field work at the very least aren't. Um, and it's not just field work. You know what I mean? You can have a stretch of 10 warm, decent days that leads into a stretch of even less than desirable days. And you can still get a lot of fall, uh, spring prep work done um, in that amount of time. It melts and then it dries, hopefully, depending on mm -hmm. where you're at. Um, you know, so you have this ability to get a lot of work done. We're not there. And actually it doesn't look like we'll be there for another couple of weeks. Like they're talking that we could see a turn to true spring. So not in a, not a rapid warm up by any means by the middle of the month. So it, it needs to be something that's being paid attention to. That's also part of the frustrating thing with this market, not doing what it should be doing. Right. right? It can remain right. irrational longer than we can stay solvent, but you know, the, the market seems impervious to that right now. You know, we got the USDA come out with 92 million acres. At 92 million acres, we saw carryout remain relatively close to unchanged. Picture that at 90. It's a huge difference. It's 360 million bushel of difference at a 180 yield. So, say 175 is harder math. So, that's why I used 180. But the problem is, is that every day you want to beat the bullish drum for corn with that story, you have to remember what that means for soybeans. So, it could be... You know, one of those things where you could see those markets start to separate eventually if they wanted to trade what was actually taking place on the weather side. Right. When do you think we'll start seeing some effect on the wheat market with what's happened in Australia and the amount of drought that they have over there? I mean, it sounds like to me they've just it's it's a it is a freaking just everything's on fire. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you honestly, if, if you wanted to, you know, really put anything on, you know, what is it? A congressional under congressional scope of investigation, let's look at the collusion that's taking place with Russia and the wheat market. Because right, exactly. right now, that seems to be the only thing that people are paying attention to is what's going on with the Russian wheat supply. I heard someone say the other day that wheat supply, global wheat supplies were over burdensome. Okay, pull China out and you have 46% of the overall global wheat supply. So you can say that based on the number that you're looking at. But China's wheat's not making it into the pipeline. A lot of this wheat that's sitting in other places is going to be needed. Um, you know, and honestly, right now, in my opinion, I'm planning on carrying forward last year's wheat, some of it, because I think my crop size in my in my area that's coming into my elevator is going to be that much smaller that if I want to have anything in storage to capture carry and try to gain some basis improvement, you know, it's going to be wheat. I just, we... The stuff that did get planted looks like crap here. Um, a lot of it didn't even come up until the most recent snowstorm. And we really needed kind of this nice, decent, mild winter without a lot of freezing thaws and a nice warm up in March. And we're not seeing any of that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the crop looks like April 1st, May 1st, and then obviously July 1st when it's time to, to harvest it. Yeah. Yep, there's just some of the stuff that's going on in the market adds up, and then some of it doesn't add up. And yeah. to me, the wheat market's one of those ones that just doesn't quite add up to what to what we see happening as far as world supply and, and then what demand looks like on top of that. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on, Angie. So, <clears throat> people want to reach out to you, pick your brain a little bit, and maybe figure out uh, what's going on in the world from your perspective. <laughs> how would they do that? Yeah, I'm open to anyone telling me what's going on in the world right now because I'm I am uh, I'm clueless. So you can find me at uh, on Twitter at Goddess of Grain, or you can email me at asetzer at citizenselevator dot com. Right on. Well, Angie, take care of yourself, and we will talk to you again next week. Sounds good. Have a good well, weekend. That's going to do it for this edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. Remember, if you want to continue any of these conversations, you can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. 
You can also send me an email at Moving Iron Podcast at movingironpodcast.com. You can also visit the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. Here you can find Morning Market Roundup with Chip Nellinger and Angie Setzer. Also, Tax Moves with Glenn Birnbaum. Moving Iron Podcast is proud to be part of the Global Ag Network. The network is going live soon, so check out globalagnetwork.com for more details and updates. You'll be able to hear Dryline Farmer Podcast, Girls Talk Ag, the Top Soil Podcast, Ag News Daily, Working Cows, Heifer Please, Throwback Iron, and Ask Agnes. Please visit movingironllc.com. Here you can find information, details, and updates for the 2019 Moving Iron Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can leave a review and subscribe at your favorite podcasting platform. And you can find this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and SoundCloud. So until next time, let's go move some iron. This is Casey Seymour. Out. Moving iron in the 21st century.